uh, if you study these blue zones, so what we've been talking about, uh, and these five different areas in the world, well, they, they're not following some sort of blueprint. They're not looking at scientific studies, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, no one's telling them. This is just their culture. It's yes. the way they live. Yes. And it's the way it's been passed down uh, generation after generation. And This is the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast, and I'm your host, Maya Acosta. If you're willing to go with me, together we can discover how simple lifestyle choices can help improve our quality of life and increase our longevity in a good way. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast with your host, Maya Acosta and Dr. Riz. Today is Monday, Dr. Riz. You know what that means? That means it's time for another episode of Doctor, Doctor in, in the, the house. house. And this is where we speak with our guest expert, Dr. Rizwan Bukhari. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed three episodes now of uh, Blue Zone Living. We've been talking about the sense of community and how important that is for our health. We spoke about moving uh, naturally in our environment. We last week spoke about nutrition and how important a plant forward diet is. And in this episode, we're going to talk about downshifting. In other words, reducing our stress. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, Dr. Riz, I have a question for you. Uh, I, I have an icebreaker. If you could have a meal with someone from a blue zone, who would it be and why? What healthy and delicious dishes would you like to share? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think uh, uh, because we talk about the blue zones as being a, uh, uh, areas in where we see a statistically significantly higher proportion of centenarians than everywhere else in the uh, uh, world, I would uh, enjoy uh, sitting down with a centenarian. You know, I actually get to deal with uh, elderly uh, individuals regularly in my in my practice, uh, and I very much enjoy sitting down and talking with them and uh, hearing about their life experiences. And mm -hmm. uh, they've lived such a long, rich life. It's it's fun to hear what they've been through and what they've seen. So I, I that's what I would enjoy. And then as far as uh, the second part of the question, which was, what foods would you eat? Just what foods? Food. You know, I I. I've, uh, or in one of the other episodes, I alluded to the fact that probably I think my favorite blue zone would be uh, Costa Rica. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm partial to black uh, black beans and rice. Oh. Uh, and I think that's very much a, uh, and tortillas. Yes. Uh, and so that's very much a staple <laughs> of the Costa Rican uh, blue zone diet. Oh, yeah. I remember before I went vegan, I had their typical breakfast and it had that gallo pinto, but it also had other, you know, it had animal foods. I don't eat that anymore, but I, I still remember feeling like, wow, this is like the freshest food I've ever had. It didn't taste, most of the meats that people eat have been frozen and stored for quite a while. Um, but today, yeah, they have such delicious, you know, I've traveled there now as a vegan plant-based person and uh, still enjoy the food. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. That's a good question. Okay. Okay, so now it's your turn. Okay. If you could live in a blue zone for a week, which healthy habit would you be most excited to adopt and why? Okay. I feel like this is similar to one I've already answered. So the healthy habits are about food, moving naturally, downshifting, um, and kind of building a sense of community. I think downshifting would be the one thing that I would really enjoy doing and just... Uh, relaxing, maybe mingling with the locals. That's one thing that I really do want to be able to do more often when we travel is meet someone that is local to the region because then it makes the location, that destination a lot more meaningful. So yeah, All that's right. pretty cool. All right. So welcome to the fourth and final episode of the Blue Zones Lifestyle Series where we uncover the significance of stress reduction and practice of downshifting Inspired by the wisdom of the Blue Zones, we explore how managing and reducing stress can contribute to a healthier, more balanced, and fulfilling life. If you're just joining us for the first time, we want to tell you what Blue Zones are. These are areas throughout the world where people live the longest without chronic disease. Yeah, it's areas in the world where uh, people live the longest and healthiest, and uh, they have a statistically significantly higher proportion of people who live to be 100 and healthy 
uh, than anywhere else in the world. That's right. So National Geographic Fellow Dan Butner was the one that set out a few years ago to discover these areas, and he took demographers and scientists and a whole entire team to document and interview these individuals. And so we're covering lessons from the Blue Zones and how they reflect lifestyle medicine, the other things that we teach on this podcast. And so today we're talking about stress management. So so what I think is interesting about these Blue Zones mm -hmm. is that uh, they come from a, tr a variety of places in the world, different ethnicities, maybe even slightly different genetic makeups. And yet uh, they identified nine principles uh, that are yeah. common to these areas uh, that they think are largely responsible uh, for the longevity and health benefits. That's right. So lifestyle plays a significant role. In today's fa uh, fast-paced world, stress has become a common companion of many. Chronic stress can have detrimental effects on our physical and mental well-being, leading to various health problems, including heart disease, depression, and weakened immune system. The Blue Zones communities teach us the importance of adopting strategies to effectively manage and reduce stress in our lives so, I mean, when I think of stress, it's not just the stress of keeping busy, but also how it affects sleep. And while we're not having a separate episode on sleep, I think we can kind of say that when we have stress, how we eat is affected, how we ex exercise, whether we exercise at all, is affected, um, we lose sleep. Um, our gut microbiome gets affected by the stress. Our moods are affected by stress. Downshifting can contribute to overall well-being. Let's talk about some of the detrimental consequences of having too much stress in our life. You know, stress is actually a part of our lives, and it's an important, uh, our stress, we have stress responses. And it, those, those responses are important, but we kind of developed to, to experience the stress, deal with it, and then let it go. And so a, that's, uh, stress was supposed to be more episodic in nature. Uh, and, but you fast forward millennia to, or to our current lifestyles, and we're all under constant, in constant states of stress. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, uh, what that does to us is that we release stress hormones, and uh, it affects our bodies in a certain way. And so we're just constantly under stress, and, and that impacts our physiology. Mm. And then, of course, if it impacts yeah. our physiology, it impacts our health. And the interesting thing is that it can impact our health uh, and, and a variety of ways, mm -hmm. both our mental health and our physical health, um, cardiovascular disease, anxiety, depression, uh, a weakened immune system, uh, mental health disorders. Mm -hmm. So constant stress is not good for us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, learning to effectively manage our stress uh, in this modern lifestyle mm -hmm. is very important. Leave us comments in the comment area below and tell us how you have recently been experiencing stress. I know that a lot of us have sort of come out of this pandemic period of two or three years and still feel some of the tension in our body uh, or just the awkwardness of socializing again and getting out there in public in gatherings. That can also be stressful now. Let's talk about downshifting. Downshifting refers to intentionally slowing down simplifying and creating space for rest, relaxation, rejuvenation. I'm thinking about how we recently did restorative yoga uh, mm -hmm. at the studio next to us. Yeah, you know, so earlier on another episode, we talked about sailing mm -hmm. and how important that to us is, is to us for, my, for a downshifting. But I would like to point out that that's more episodic. You know, you, don't, you shouldn't work for six months just to go on your one-week trip so that you can downshift and and just for that one week you're just taking it easy whether it's on the beach or sailing a boat or in the yeah. mountains and enjoying uh, i think that it's important to understand that this downshifting that we're talking about is incorporating uh that concept into your daily practice and, and that's going to be more meaningful and help you manage your stress much better uh, so you know i think that uh, there are different methods and different ways you can do this. Yeah, that's a, an excellent point. I, uh, I have often said that I don't want to wait to relax till I go on vacation. I want to feel, I, I want to know how to downshift at the end of the day to relax a little bit more. Um, so the feeling calm and being more present in everything that I'm doing, it, whether I'm interacting with someone or I'm just washing dishes, I want to be more present. 
Uh, and so we're going to talk to you about some of those strategies that you can use in terms of downshifting to reduce the stress that is currently in your life. Recently, I started using the Calm app, mainly because you told me that you were using the Calm app and I purchased the full app and it, it tracks when you're using it. And I have found that I'm using it almost every day and uh, it helps me to sleep. It helps me to calm my mind at the end of the day. Uh, you can do all sorts of practices with that Calm app. But uh, you can end the day with gratefulness, feeling grateful and thankful for what you have. Uh, you can also use it to calm your mind uh, when you're having a panic attack. At least I've done that. So the, it has many different tools. So mindfulness and meditation, engaging in mindfulness and meditation practices such as meditation or deep breathing exercises to cultivate present moment awareness and reduce stress. Those are excellent tools. Set aside dedicated time each day to disconnect from distractions and find inner calm. Yeah, I think um, mindfulness and meditation are, are really gaining some traction in our, in our world. Uh, maybe if you go back a decade or 15 years ago, it was very unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, but people are steadily beginning to recognize the importance of incorporating this kind of stuff in, into your lifestyle and into your daily practice. And it doesn't take much. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be that kind of old uh, romanticized stuff of, uh, that you see on TV where you think someone's sitting with their legs crossed for 30, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or an hour, and suddenly they're meditating so well that they're floating in the air. Right. No, it, it's, it doesn't have to be that. It's, right. uh, it's whatever resonates with you and just taking a few minutes out. It can be three minutes. It can be five minutes. It can be 10 minutes. It can be in the morning. Right. It can be at lunch when you have a little bit of a break. Uh, it uh, it can be at night, and it, or it can be all of them, and uh, and all it is is you uh, entertaining mindfulness practices. And I love the apps, so mm -hmm. you can do it on your own, or if you're like me, I like to have guided meditations or guided things that uh, kind of help me. And there, so it can it can work any way, and and I don't think it, any is better than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just again what works for you, and so three minutes. Uh, can be good. And you can do different things. There can be affirmations. There can be, uh, you know, things to get your energy going or things to take, slow you down. Mm -hmm. uh, and or there can be uh, things to get you, uh, you know, all excited about the day or be, gratitude. You know, there's so many different opportunities. And I, that's, what, again, why the apps are great, uh, because they've explored all of these for you. And there's all sorts of categories and so many things to choose from uh, that uh, there's uh, you can almost always find something that you want to do. Some mm -hmm. people do the same thing every day, and others do something different every mm -hmm. single time. Yep. So uh, again, that's the I think the apps are a great way to get into the mindfulness and meditation space. Yes, absolutely. And many many years ago, when I used to have a lot of more anxiety during the day, I started using a recording that was mainly used during walking. So like a walking meditation, guided meditation, so that wherever you are, you're being very deliberate in your steps, noticing your surroundings. It's all about raising awareness and calming the mind. So often on the podcast, I talk about self-care as well. So prioritizing self-care. So taking time to self-care, to have those activities as you nurture your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. And again, this could include like a hobby of yours, like if you like painting or coloring. Nowadays, they have coloring books for adults that are really calming and soothing. Gardening. Gardening, uh, relaxing baths, practicing yoga, doing nature walks. Uh, but I once had a, a, a guest who said, you know, self-care is not just about taking a bubble bath. It's uh, for for many self care is also about doing the work during you know the inner work to take care of yourself setting strong boundaries so that you're not burning the candle at both ends using your voice so that you don't feel that you're being taken advantage of so those are other ways that we care for ourselves and we often talk about that here on the podcast oh look at that establishing boundaries is on this list yeah. um, and, and we talked about practicing gratitude. Yes. Yeah. So let me go back to uh, boundaries because we did talk about caretaking when we are responsible for either caring for loved ones, children, 
for parents that now need that. So set clear boundaries between work and personal life. Avoid excessive work hours and create time for your relaxation, your hobbies, and learn to say no to commitments that drain your energy and prioritize activities that bring you joy. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be working on more this year is learning how to say no to, you know, because we're always invited to be part of something and it can be overwhelming by saying no, we're protecting our energy and prioritizing ourselves. Uh, and then, you know, seeking support. There's nothing wrong with getting a therapist or a life coach to support you in personal growth. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, you said therapists and life coach and mentors. Uh, I think those are all important uh, in in helping you uh, discover what's important. There's nothing wrong with seeking uh, the wisdom of those who've got more experience than you. Yep. And people that, that you believe are supporting you. So as we conclude our Blue Zones Lifestyle Series, we recognize the importance of stress reduction and downshifting and cultivating a balanced and fulfilling life by adopting strategies to manage stress, practicing downshifting and prioritizing self-care. We can enhance our overall well-being, resilience and longevity. Can you think of other ways that you can downshift or feel good? Yeah, I think it's just anything that uh, uh, gets you out of your mind and takes you away f uh, from kind of the the stress that we experience on a daily basis. You know, you you know, changing your speed when you get home from work. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, some maybe doing something that just kind of gets you out of that work mode. Uh, you know, whatever that might be, going for That's a walk, right. doing some exercise. You know, there's all so many different things. Yeah, I what one thing that I like is when I'm at home working a lot nonstop and very focused. I like when I take a walk with Poppy because I can just like let it go. Yeah. Like I think I'm out I'm out of the office. I'm letting it go. I look around, I look at the sky, the trees, the grass, and I'm I'm also imagining what it's like for him because he's a very present creature. Yeah. I love dogs because <laughs> they live in the moment. Uh, and they teach us to do so too if, right. if we are open to the message. Yeah. And and I think that the the thing about is that what or what I'd like to say is there's no one way to do it. Uh, it's whatever resonates with you. And, and I think, but and really more important than anything else, just have some intention in it so that you understand that you recognize that that's what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so then you can do it in many different ways. Absolutely. And as we're wrapping up, you know, I want to remind you again that what we see, you know, lessons from the Blue Zones is that in these communities, people take the time after like in the evenings to come together and mingle in their community. I know that at one time my sister lived in a certain part of Mexico where the whole town comes out and walks in the plaza in the evening. It's just how they downshift. It's not like us, like we're nonstop working all day long. There are communities throughout the world where people just know when to quit work yeah. and they value com uh, community. You know what's interesting about that? So if you go to... Uh, if you study these blue zones, so what we've been talking about, uh, and these five different areas in the world, well, they, they're not following some sort of blueprint. They're mm -hmm. not looking at scientific studies, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, no one's telling them this is just their culture. It's yes. the way they live, yes. and it's the way it's been passed down uh, generation after generation, and, and that's the way they live. And so it's not actually a very, it's not a deliberate thing. And we're talking about being deliberate because we live in a different world where we uh, kind of live so contrary to those concepts that we have to be deliberate about it. Yes. Uh, although I would say that once you start to incorporate these and make it a, your daily practice and it becomes a part of your lifestyle, it becomes easier and you, have, and you don't have to be as deliberate about it. Right. But so it's kind of interesting to me that that's just their lives. That's just the way they're living. Just the same way we're living the way we live. That's right. Uh, although I think we need to be more deliberate just because we're yes. not necessarily living the healthiest yeah. approach to life. Yeah. I mean, we enjoy sunsets. And I, the sunsets, no matter where you are in the world, you don't have to see it set over the horizon at a beach. The sun will set somewhere. And, you know, there are times when I've been on the road and I'm watching the sunset behind 
uh, what's in front of it are buildings, and it, the, you still see this golden color across the sky. And it, and I think, God, there's so much beauty. And so all we have to do is just go like to White Rock Lake, where I think you said at one point you used to watch the sunset. Mm-hmm. So there are places where you can just enjoy the beauty in your area without having to travel five hours to a destination, for example. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, you know how they say we learn what we need to, we teach what we need to learn the most. Part of what I like about the podcast is everything that I share, I'm trying to implement for myself too. Lifestyle medicine is very important for me too. So managing my stress, setting boundaries, prioritizing myself, all of that stuff is part of what I'm working on too. And so that's our goal by us sharing uh, the blue zones. We're not just sharing it for the sake of it. These are important uh, principles and lessons that we want to implement in our lives as well. Well said. Yeah. So friends, we hope that you have enjoyed this series. We had a lot of fun putting it together. Tell us what you thought about it. What other topics should we talk about? We know we, we teased previously about you talking about longevity or uh, intermittent fasting, uh, but there are so many ways that we can improve our quality of life. I'm going to work on an episode on forest bathing, which again, takes you back to using nature as medicine or nature therapy. So if you have any other ideas for us, let us know, um, because we do, we like recording these doctor in the house episodes. All right. All right. Goodbye. You've been listening to the healthy lifestyle solutions podcast with your host, Maya Acosta. If you've enjoyed this content, please share with one friend who can benefit. You can also leave us a five-star review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash HLS. This helps us to spread our message. As always, thank you for being a listener.